our speaker tonight, Patrick Johnson, and he's gonna say a little bit about Patrick. First. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Johnson has worked as a consultant uh, in and outside Mohawk Valley on issues of race relations and gun violence since 2001. Uh, he has facilitated hundreds of workshops and lectures for police and parole officers college faculty, staff and students, as well as nonprofit and business professionals and community members of all walks of life. Uh, he's currently working with political and criminal justice leaders in the region to address critical areas of influence as they relate to race relations and inclusion for a better community. Uh, Patrick founded Hoops and Dreams in 2002 and New Life Institute in 2005. The mission of these projects is empowering Black America, the former utilizing basketball courts and the latter utilizing classrooms. <coughs> these initiatives focus on the biggest issues plaguing African American communities, placing special emphasis on anger management, peaceful alternatives to violence, drug and alcohol abuse, teenage pregnancy, life and job skills, racism, self-confidence, and the importance of education. The primary purpose of these programs is to raise the consciousness within the African American community about what must be done to enhance the quality of life in their own community. Since 2013, as a member of the Oneida County District Attorney's team, Patrick has served as the first program director of Save Our Streets, uh, which aims to eliminate gun violence in Utica. As the VA's community liaison, he works directly with gang members, as well as with individuals who are at risk of being vulnerable toward this violence. Since 2009, Patrick has been employed by Mohawk Valley Community College to enroll formerly incarcerated students and also serves as the community civility liaison, assisting the college to address racism among faculty and students. So it is an honor to have Patrick doing this work in our community and very excited to have him be able to speak with us this evening. Thank you. Mrs. Hamilton. 
Jonathan, I see you. Thank you for showing up. My old friend uh, Jim and Nancy, and I see other people here too. I'm not familiar with everybody, um, but thank you for taking the time out of whatever you typically do um, to be here this evening. Nancy, hello, I see you. Um, <clears throat> so thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate you being here this evening. And I'm just as intrigued by the people that I don't know, uh, because sometimes I wonder, you know, what is it um, that connects people to a topic such as this? So, um, our topic tonight, um, does white supremacy exist in the Mohawk Valley? And um, so that's what I will be talking about. And I want to, everybody's familiar with um, the showdown that occurred in Charlottesville, correct? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna make some remarks. I guess I'll talk for about 15 minutes or so. I don't know, I'm just gonna move with the spirit and uh, follow some of my notes and then we'll open it up for questions. We good? Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> certainly we, uh, we all watched the horror back in Charlottesville, Virginia, um, when that occurred. And so I think now when I was invited to speak on this topic, that that would be a good starting point in terms of engaging on tonight's topic, looking at white supremacy. As the dust begins to settle, if it can, from the tragedy, horror, and shock of Charlottesville, Charlottesville, it would be my hope that every thinking, well-intentioned, good American would be asking, how did we get here? And I say that because, you know, we think of the KKK and things like that. For many people, we think of that in the days of old. But Charlottesville has reminded us, and certainly many incidents before that, but that one stuck out for me, and I suspect that it did for many people, about the work that we still have to do in this country. How should we as good Americans respond? I have been privileged and fortunate uh, to be doing the work on race relations professionally since 2001. And since that time, I cannot count all the times that I have heard many people, and to be perfectly candid, um, mostly friends, but sometimes not friends, and mostly, not only, not exclusively, but mostly white people minimize how problematic racism is. And that is just my experience, that is my experience. By the way, I was born and raised in this community and I left the area for a while to go to Atlanta, Georgia. I served in the, uh, in the United States Army for a while. So I've had experiences that have taken me away from here. But I love this community in spite of its problems. It seems to me that it typically takes something catastrophic, like a Trayvon Martin, a Ferguson, a Freddie Gray, the NFL and the United States flag and who gets to kneel and who stands and where that's a problem for Charlottesville to make America wake up to its racism. In other words, it seems that it takes something of a crisis proportion to say we still have this issue. Everybody with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's what was very obvious for everyone who witnessed Charlottesville, the Charlottesville scene. There were obviously, and I wasn't counting, but I suspect hundreds of people who were affiliated and proudly affiliated with the KKK, neo-Nazis, or white supremacists at that rally. They are often referred to as extremists or fringe groups. They were very visible, powerful, and dangerous. I feel fortunate that I was not there. And the reason why I ask this for everybody, and Perhaps I'm making a slight assumption that everybody was familiar with Charlottesville. I was um, on a, every now and then I am invited to speak at a college or something like that. And recently, very recently, I was uh, had the privilege to have a conversation with some students at a local college. And many of them in the room were not familiar with Charlottesville. So that is why 
And it's okay if, 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 if you don't, but I was, it was just striking to me. And that was just a couple of days ago. I think out of the 12 or so students that I was talking with, uh, maybe two raised their hand. The hate that is displayed by the Ku Klux Klan, white nationalists, for black people, Jews, and others, was clearly on display for everybody to see. All of these hate groups, in some capacity, are linked to racism and white supremacy. It's obvious, especially when they are hooded in robes. For all of the well-intentioned, good Americans who are not able or unwilling to see the magnitude of racism Although it is sometimes subtle, the showdown in Charlottesville showed us that racism is alive and well. So I was just sharing with you that I was at a local college here, and that was, in fact, that was last night. Uh, on Monday, I had the privilege to go to a campus in Albany and speak at a research center to professors and people with, you know, they were obviously well-educated. And we're doing some deep research on what I don't know. But uh, the first response after myself and another professor gave our talk is a guy raised his hand and he says, I don't see it. And he was more, more or less talking about in his facility. And he was well-intentioned. And he could only stay for 10 minutes and we were there for a couple of hours. But I thought that that was so classic. So this is not about, let me be clear as a disclaimer, this is not about bashing or white bashing or anything like that, but I am just struck in my adult years about what people notice and what they don't. And so this guy was a middle-aged, educated, white man, and his question was the first one. He says, I don't see it. It's obvious, especially when they are hooded in robes. And so for all of the well-intentioned good Americans who are not able or unwilling to see the magnitude of racism, although yes, it is sometimes subtle, Charlottesville has showed us the work that we still have to do. Most black folks are very conscious and aware of the racism in America. Um, and, I, and certainly not all, because some of them also minimize the impact of racism. This is so because we are confronted with it regularly. It seems to me that many, if not most white people, have a very different perspective. And that's not said to be disrespectful. I'm just gauging my experience. And when I check in with other people, their experiences around racism. And obviously, I'm, for this moment, I'm putting this in a black-white context, but everybody gets to engage about their experiences and share what they see and feel. And I'll get into that in just a moment. For black people and other people of color, it does not take the KKK, white nationalists, and neo-Nazis marching down the street to recognize that America has a race issue. And it's going to require all of us to be very conscientious. The mental and emotional toll on black minds and bodies cannot be measured. With that in mind, I want to ask all of you to consider a few things. Try extremely hard, and I can only imagine, because I am a person of color and I'm of African descent, I am a black man. Um, although, you know, when I, I was recently talking with my aunt and who has done a lot of research on our family tree, and you know, I, when I think about um, slavery, which is something that is hard for many of us to fathom, but my aunt who used to be a teacher here and she has since moved away, she was talking about 